Every year at this time, we get a reminder. Stay awake, be alert. We get these gospels that Jesus told about those who were ready and those who were not ready. See, the thing is, after Jesus' resurrection and his return to the Father, the early Christian church, they really believed that Jesus' return was going to happen very, very soon. Most definitely within the first couple of decades. When you look at the scriptures, the first letter that Paul writes is to the Thessalonians. And it's interesting to note that 1 Thessalonians, the theme is almost exclusively, hey, come on, he's coming back. You've got to be ready. Don't take this for granted. And then a few years later, when the second letter to the to the Thessalonians, ah, it's not easy, was written, the tone is a little bit different. It's more of a, okay, we believe that he is still coming. It may not be quite as soon as we thought. So, you know, those of you who are just saying, I don't have to do anything because Jesus is coming, you need to go out, get your jobs, feed your families, Await him, but maybe not quite as soon as we thought. And Christian churches, as you know, for hundreds of years have been predicting when Jesus would return. We don't know. So what do we get ready for? How do we prepare ourselves? How about this? We live. We deal with each day. You know, you can have all of those good intentions. You know, we're still what? not quite two months away from New Year's when we have to make our and break our resolutions. But we always seem to do it. We always seem to get sidetracked. And then we say to ourselves, oh, if only I had used the time wisely, if only I had been ready. Well, We all know that that only goes so far. There was no way that we could have been making ourselves ready for the pandemic that came upon us. Maybe there were steps that could have been taken, but overall, we've had to learn and we've had to adjust and we've had to adapt. We couldn't prepare for something that we had no idea about. (laughs) But isn't it interesting how for so many Americans, their first step in preparing for this particular catastrophe was to stock up and hoard toilet paper. But nevertheless, God gives to us the gift of time, the gift of now. And he invites us each day, use it wisely, use it well. Build my kingdom. Share my love. And that's how we get ready. We don't have to spend our time saying, oh, Jesus is coming, I've got to hoard 
whatever. No. What I've got to do is live today. He was going to be all that he wanted to tomorrow. None would be kinder or braver than he tomorrow. A friend who was troubled and weary he knew, who'd be glad of a lift and who needed it too. On him he would call and see what he could do tomorrow. Each morning he stacked up the letters he'd write tomorrow and thought of the folks he would fill with delight tomorrow. But hadn't one minute to stop on his way, more time I will give to others, he'd say, tomorrow. The greatest of disciples this man would have been, tomorrow. The world would have hailed him if he had seen, tomorrow. But in fact, he passed on and he faded from view and all that he left here when living was through was a mountain of things he intended to do tomorrow. Maybe, maybe, maybe we can be honest with ourselves. All the things that we've been procrastinating, putting off, and just today, do one. And then when the next day becomes today, do one. So our lives can be a series of do one. And that can help so many because we do have a lot to give. Depends upon which neighborhood we decide we're going to live in. There's a town that has four separate neighborhoods. The first neighborhood is called Yabbats. The people who live there think they know what needs to be done. As a matter of fact, they talk about it quite convincingly, up to a point. When told they have an opportunity for something, the conversations go something like this. Yeah, but the abbots have the answer. It just happens to be the wrong answer. The next neighborhood is known as the Gunnadoos. Now they are some of the best intentioned folks you could ever meet. They really understand what needs to be done. And they would have done it if they'd only followed through. They study everything that is required very carefully. And just as an opportunity drift, drifts past them, they realize what they were going to do. If only they had done what they were going to do. Another neighborhood is known as the Wisherwoodas. These people have an excellent perspective on life, hindsight. They say, I wish I woulda this, or wish I woulda that. They know everything that should be done, only it's after the fact. The last neighborhood is known as the Glad I Dids. They are a truly special group of people. The Wisher Woodas drive by the Glad I Dids homes and admire them. The Gunnadoos want to join them, but just cannot quite get around to it. The Yabbits could have been Glad I Dids, but destiny just did not smile on them. The glad I dids are pleased that they are disciplined enough to do what they know they should do instead of always doing just what they wanted to do.
each day when we wake up. God says to you, here is the gift of today. And then, that's the question.